If you have your Bible, we will go together to the 1st Kings chapter 2 verse 44. 1st Kings chap chapter 2 verse 44. We believe in the Bible. We believe it's God's written book. We believe uh, even in the, in the cover. We believe in the maps. In everything in the Bible. Amen. I heard this story of one person was uh, flying and reading a Bible and the passenger in the, in, the, in the airplane looked and said, you believe everything that this book says? And the Christian says, well, of course I do. And the, the skeptic said, even the, the story of the Jonah in the fish for three days? They said, well, of course they do. He said, well, how did he survive for three days in the fish? And the Christian says, well, I don't know. But when I die, I go to heaven, I'll ask Jonah. And the skeptic says, well, what if he is not in heaven? He said, well, then you'll ask him. <laughs> First Kings uh, chapter 2 verse 44. Thus the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. It summarizes a few chapters before this statement. Chapter 1 and chapter 2 where Solomon became a king and before he became a king his father told him that as I am going to pass on I'm going to die go in the way of life he said you will become a king and when I die some of the enemies I accumulated throughout my life will not die with me you know David it wasn't like one of the pharaohs when pharaohs died all of his mistresses his wives his kids his slaves his haters everybody died with him that's not really how it happened with David David says when I'm going to die all of them my haters and my enemies are still going to continue and they will be your problem Solomon so not only I am giving you a kingdom I'm also passing on to you some problems and you Solomon be wise and deal with them accordingly and so we see that Solomon begins to deal with those enemies one by one. He dismantles them, some he throws into exile, some he executes, some he gives them a chance to make it right. And we see after all of the enemies were cleared off, this is where it says, And then the kingdom was established, the kingdom of Solomon. It's one thing to become a king. It's another thing to get established as a king. It's one thing to get married. It's completely another thing to be established as a married person. Even this week you saw, you know, Brad and, and, and Jolie, uh, you know, been together for 12 years, been married for two years and a relationship that wasn't established. And it's a huge, huge deal where it's going to cost a lot of money and lawyers are going to make good money, where a relationship is going to collapse and a lot of children will suffer for it. And this is a pandemic that travels in our culture. Over 50% of marriages, people start, people become a king, but they don't get established in the kingdom of their marriage. The second marriage is the divorce rate is about 60%. The third marriage is the divorce rate is about 75 And the further it goes, it adds 10%. Because today we are good at becoming something something that we cannot get established in. Same thing happens with businesses. We know that 96% of small businesses fail in the first 10 years. 8 out of 10 businesses, small businesses fail completely and we see that people become something but today I want to talk about how to establish that which you became. Many times people even receive physical healing in their body and they feel good and then they go back home or the symptoms come back and they lose that healing or when people receive a freedom and, and they feel free, they know they're free, they see the changes in their life for the next few weeks and then after that they go back to where they were in the first place. How many that we see get fire for God and they begin to pray, they begin to read their scriptures, they begin to feel like this new energy that goes in. They even get up and share a testimony and then three months later you say, hey, well, where is that person again? Because to become a king is one thing. To get established as a king is a completely different game. Saul was a king and God threw him a test but he failed the test and he wasn't established as a king and God came and says you're still gonna carry the crown you're no longer a king 
prodigal son received the inheritance but he wasn't established in his inheritance and then came back smelling like pigs because he lost that Judas was chosen to be a disciple he wasn't established as a, an apostle of Jesus Christ and we saw how tragically his life ended our goal today and we many times as young people as adults we aim to get to the throne we aim to get married we game to start something and it's so good to do that but get Getting it or starting it is not the finish line. There is a point where what you got, you have to get established in it. When Solomon got established, only then in chapter 3, God spoke to Solomon and gave him wisdom only then in chapters leading on he built a temple only then Solomon's influence grew and spread his fame and his wealth and the ability to help many people grew but everything started with being established in the position you know I'm guilty of that like anyone else how many promises I made that God I'm gonna pray this amount of you know time spend with you and then sometimes three four days later and guess what happens you go back to the same place where you started no prayer at all so many times I remember in my younger years this was my epidemic my problem is that I would start and then I would quickly lose the passion for it I will quickly lose the, and I wouldn't get established and the areas where I did not get established were the areas where my life always continued in the same cycle the same old thing and my life didn't change because I started something life only begins to change when you get established in what you started when you pass through the emotion stage when you pass through I don't feel it no more stage when you pass through and we're gonna talk about that in a moment a demonic attack and assault on your new position you're young you are rustic you are inexperienced you only have great emotion raging inside of you but there is no spiritual spiritual strength there's no spiritual vitality and next thing that happens is the enemy knocks you out and you started it not only you didn't get established but the dreams God had for you the goal the resources God wanted you to use to build a temple the, 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 the influence that God wanted you to reach for his kingdom the name of his glory to bring up to all the nations all of that gets squashed because Satan attacks you the most in your infancy that's why Jesus was attacked when he was a baby that's why Moses was attacked when he was a baby and that's why you will be attacked only when you start that's why when Jesus started his ministry Holy Spirit revealed and then right away 40 days of demonic bombardment the devil was bombarding why because that is when you're the most vulnerable God doesn't want you to start something only he wants you to get established in it and not only to get established but so you can rise and reach your heights for the glory of God can somebody shout amen I want you to write down point number one when David died his enemies continued to live when David died his enemies continued to live what we have to understand is that there are demons that hunt next generation there are curses many times that do not die at the funerals curses always get passed on inheritance you know if you if your family is very rich and your parents pass away the inheritance doesn't die with them the inheritance gets passed on and if they had a will it gets passed on to the next of kin and if they had no will well the lawyers are gonna take a big chunk and then there's gonna be a, a lot of fighting or who's gonna get relatives gonna get involved but but the point being is the inheritance continues on same thing with demonic curses they pass on that's why when you go to the doctor the doctor who might not even believe in the Christianity he will ask you you know is there this sickness is traveling in your family you're like well I didn't come you to you about my family I came here to talk to you about me he was but the doctor knows more things about the spiritual and the and the genes and many times things are passed on and David when he is dying he says Solomon I want you to be careful I'm a man after God's heart I followed God I'm giving you gold and silver that I collected so you can build a temple I'm giving you my mule I'm giving you my house I'm giving you everything else I'm passing on but but Solomon I have to also tell you one thing you're not only getting the riches and the blessings you're not only getting a position you're not only going in as a son of one of the greatest kings Israel has ever had Solomon I also had enemies 
that I was not able to conquer while I was alive and you're gonna get him too and this is the enemy number one number two number three and number four these are the names I want you to be careful don't rush to build a temple don't rush to become rich don't rush to get married Solomon first clear up the enemies that got passed on to you from me now most of us do not have David's in our life as parents who before going out you know will say hey I'm passing on you this 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 and by the way I also had big anger issues and drinking problems and you might be tempted with that as well may God give you the grace to overcome these generational curses but you and I we have the enemies passed on to us by our fathers and our mothers grandmothers and grandfathers even if your father was as godly as David even if your grandfather was as anointed as David a man after God's heart so powerful that God made Jesus's title to be son of David he and she still have enemies that got passed on to you those are the enemies that when you become a king will show up to overthrow your position those will be the demons that will undermine your new position in life you choose to finally I'm starting my new life some of you you started to come to church some of you, you even moved to tri cities some of you you blocked off a particular a particular relationship you got water baptized you made a decision to follow Jesus and you're saying this is my new life and so you're beginning it's great but I gotta warn you yes on the cross of Jesus everything has been paid for but there are certain guys whose main intent is to overthrow you in your new position and you're most vulnerable when you are at your infancy one of those guys was Adonijah Adonijah was actually another son that David had Adonijah wanted to be a king and Adonijah started to sneak in and with the cunning ways wanted to overthrow Solomon he didn't come with a spear with a sword he came and asked Bathsheba can you go to Solomon and ask Solomon if I can take that lady that David you know she was taking care of David and uh, if, if I can have her and this was one of the ways closer for him to become a king and overthrow Solomon and we have to be the people who are Christians who begin anything new you must understand your threat many times will come to you from generational curses and generational things that are getting past a lot of fights that we are fighting we're not the only ones fighting that we are not the first ones fighting that many times when you begin to see overall the struggles that people have these struggles have not begun with them they can be traced down to family when it comes to divorce if you're getting divorced you look around the family if 80 percent of the family is all divorced you've been passed on some enemies that you need to face that doesn't mean you have to overthrow your marriage you have to overthrow the enemy and establish your marriage if all the kids are going off and away from God and that is happening to everyone it doesn't mean you have to abandon your children you have to overthrow the enemy and establish your family if everyone in the family always just has financial struggles no matter how hard they work they're honest hard-working you know blue collar just just people who put they're all helping everyone but no one can make ends meet there is a generational curses of poverty that have been released you have a position but the enemy wants to overthrow it and you have to overthrow the enemy because somebody shout amen. amen I want you to write down point number two when Solomon became a king the enemy got terrified when Solomon became a king the enemy became scared Solomon was young and inexperienced Solomon when he became a king the enemy one of the enemies that he had was Joab Joab was actually David's relative. Joab was David's commander for a very long time and Joab was extremely skilled in the ways of war. Joab, he was a man that was extremely experienced in warfare. He was so brave and so brutal that when David would be with, with him and the other men, they were afraid of what David and his men were able to do. Joab was the man you don't want to mess with and long time ago he was David's friend but because of turn of events he became he defected 
to Adonijah and he killed Abner and he killed Amasa one of the two generals that Israel had in a time of peace Joab is symbolic of the devil he used to be with God but he defected and today he kills giants today he attacks God's children and today he's experienced in the area of cunning deception and hurting people devil has more experience than than we can even fathom and here he is left to deal with Solomon and Solomon has no more father because his father died and Joab is so experienced and so advanced he's so crafty and so cunning and he's so good at what he does and Solomon has no experience in war Solomon is very fragile but there's one thing Solomon has that Joab doesn't Solomon has authority and Joab doesn't and Solomon being young inexperienced did not back away or shut himself down or got intimidated or got pressured by the great experience and the power of Joab he went after Joab Job took his hands in the altar in the temple and says you're not going to touch me here and Solomon says watch me he sent one brave man and he struck him there and Joab was no more I want to tell each one of us here today Satan is smarter greater than you you are inexperienced you and I are like Solomon we don't have experience. We don't beat Satan without experience. We don't beat Satan with the fact we've been Christians for 30 years. We don't beat Satan with the fact that we can chant the name of Jesus 300 miles per hour. We don't beat Satan with the fact that we know the three, John 3 16 and we don't beat Satan because somehow the, the religious heritage that we have we only can beat Satan with one thing the authority of the name of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. He might be old and experienced. He might be ancient but he is defeated under your authority I want to tell you something today you might have actually demonic attack on your own life you may feel like Solomon this Joab has been a family friend for so long this Joab has been attacking your life and you feel prey you are a victim you may feel like I don't have anything I cannot even resist this sin no more I cannot resist this sickness this Joab has killed this person and this person in my family with cancer and I am so weak you might be weak but you are a king Satan is not. Satan has been thrown down and Jesus says I saw him fall like a lightning. He wasn't going up, he was going down and he's not stopping on this earth. The Bible says an angel will come bind him with the chain and throw him even deeper into the lower parts of the earth. Satan, though experienced and ancient, he is a defeated foe and he is terrified if you know who you are. Even if that sickness has killed great men in your family, you have to understand you have authority. And he is terrified when he knows you know what you got. Because you have authority that did not make the devil and sickness and disease and his works completely vanish. But that authority makes, puts fear inside of him. Because we have law enforcement in Tri Cities, when, when a law enforcement officer gets sworn in, all the criminals do not disappear from Tri Cities. But when a law enforcement walks on the street, if you are a true criminal, your heart beats faster. You even know that when you're not a criminal, you're just speeding. And you, the fear of God hits you like crazy. And you right away, you don't even know how to pray like Santa Maria, precious Jesus. I mean, anybody there, help me out, Lord. Why? Because, because of the authority. Now a guy may be behind you who is shorter than you. You might whip him in a, in, in a wrestling match, but that doesn't matter. He might be less educated than you. He might have less money than you. But see, the problem is when you are on the road, what puts fear inside of your trembling heart is the fact he has authority and you don't. You must understand that Satan doesn't have a badge. You do. This is not his earth. The Bible says the earth God has given to the sons of men. God is the owner but he delegated to us when a devil roams around the earth when he comes and attacks he is an ancient 
dragon. He is a job that sometimes clings to different things and you have to be bold even when you are insecure or feel unworthy to know your authority cannot be tampered with. Can somebody shout amen. amen. Centurion in the Bible was centurion in the Bible one time he had a servant who was sick and he came to Jesus through some people and says could you come and heal my servant and Jesus was on the way to heal his servant great awesome centurion gets this conviction that he is not good enough that's the only person in the Bible who never felt good for Jesus and the funny part is that he actually was better than probably anybody else because he built synagogues he was a good man he was a noble man and guess who he was trying to heal not even his own family his his servant this guy was better than anyone else in the bible who was asking for healing he deserved that healing but he says see sometimes the more worthy you are when you come in the presence of the someone who is truly worthy the less worthy you feel and he felt so unworthy he says Jesus please don't come to my house and he didn't say don't come into my house because the house was dirty many of us don't invite do not invite other people to our house only for one reason because it's not clean or because we haven't bought the furniture yet or because we know the kids has made a mess or because we know the person who is coming into our house when they see how small it is compared to their house we, we will feel inferior I know that I've done that many times. He's not inviting. He's a centurion. That means he, he's very wealthy man. If he had enough money to build synagogues, his house is very rich. Probably the richest house Jesus has ever been to. And he says, Jesus, don't come into my house. And not because it's dirty. Not because it's small. Not because I don't have the furniture. He says, I, I'm not good enough for you, Jesus. And this is the moment that if I and you would have said this to Jesus, don't come into my house, we would have canceled the whole miracle and said, Jesus, forget about the servant. I'll get a doctor. He says, no, Jesus, uh, don't come into my house. But I just want to tell you a few things, Jesus, that uh, I want you to, no, don't cancel the miracle. Speed up the miracle. Heal him before you get to the house. Speak a word. And then he tells Jesus where he has the audacity to have such a great faith, feeling so unworthy. He says, I am a man in authority. I don't know much about religion, but I know authority. I tell my servant and he goes and I know you have authority you don't have servants you have words and your words they obey you speak a word and they will go through the air they will go through the distance of the zip codes they will find my servant and they will heal him see you can feel how you feel your feelings should never temper with your knowledge of your authority you can feel like this but have authority in here Sometimes, you know, you may feel down, you may feel unqualified, you may feel unworthy. That's completely fine. Should, your feelings should never cancel your miracle. Your feelings should push you toward realizing your authority in Jesus. And when you know who you are, you will have great faith. And when you have great faith, you will always speed up the miracle, not cancel it. Can someone shout amen? amen. I want you to write down point number three. When you execute the enemy, you will establish yourself. When you execute the enemy, you will establish yourself. When Solomon started to execute one enemy after another, then we see Solomon's kingdom was established and Solomon received wisdom. Solomon built a temple. Solomon accomplished great feats for God. Solomon exiled some enemies, Solomon executed some enemies and this may sound a little brutal for some, maybe some coming and they're like you know I just want to hear about the hugging loving Jesus who takes children and puts them and you're talking about killing here. We're not talking about this is a spiritual reference to a spiritual enemies that we have. Spiritual enemies that are passed on many times to our generations that hold us back from being established in our prosperity, hold us back from being established in good health hold us back from being established in our marriage or in our relationship hold us back from being established in just the happiness in our family and in our life we don't believe as christians that if we are genuinely free from demons that our life on earth will be a paradise that's that's absurd our life on earth will be life on earth it's it's, it's there are evil things here there are afflictions there are troubles but the bible says is that we put on the armor of god to stand in the evil day it says evil day not days it doesn't say evil month it doesn't say evil decade and it doesn't say evil person as a Christian when you are armed you will have an evil day and sometimes you know it because everything from the beginning goes wrong 
that's when you know it's an evil day it's like I don't want to talk to anybody I don't want to go to any meeting because I know this is just gonna go south when that day happens God wants it to be a day not to turn into days weeks and months see we as Christians understand there's natural tendency natural cycle of life there's good days sometimes there's a bad day but even in the bad day you stand your ground you would stand that and the next morning the Bible says and the new mercies come from God and that's normal but the problem happens is when the day comes to an end and next morning there is no new mercy there's a new mess and the day after that there is more mess and the day after that is more mess and you don't go from glory you go from glory to glory you go from a mess to a greater mess and this is where the spiritual problem is there and we have to rise up and instead of just push harder we have to slow down and we have to run to God and say God with the help of Jesus pray somebody pray for me somebody anoint me with oil somebody help me because I gotta kill these enemies so I can establish my family establish my finances establish my marriage establish my future and reach everything God has for me can somebody shout amen